decision of um, cross-platform mobile versus native in the last few. Okay, so so this is just a personal journey of what happened with us. And please, when I talk about the JavaScript stuff, if you if you've got something to add, please pick up and, and let us know your opinion as well. Okay, so we're three people. It's two founders and one person working for us. Uh, we're a bootstrap company. We started in August 2011. This is all by service that I'm talking about, by the way. Um, and we're basically a startup. So what do we do? Okay, so um, survey data gathering up in you know various parts of Africa, and still most places around the world is done paper-based. And this is actually astounding because um, during this kind of data gathering, we gather lots of information, like literally 300 or 400 fields. And, um, and we have to, at the end of that process, we bring boxes and boxes of survey back to the office. And we have to um, try and transcribe and understand handwriting, get all this stuff into a system, and then it becomes available for analysis. And uh, I mean, this is concept obviously has been realized by a lot of the marketing research companies that moved on to mobile solutions. But strangely enough, there's a huge group of scientists out there who haven't actually gotten onto this whole thing. So what we did is we, bought, we uh, built a mobile app that allows science level social data gathering. And obviously we have built in a whole lot of stuff to, to ensure that the data is valid. We take GPS points, we take photographs of everyone we interview and we have them sign. So this gives whoever we're doing research for the, the uh, confidence that um, the data that they're actually looking at is valid, and, and also we, you know, we try and ensure that we can show a, a due process, and we have a shorter process as well, which is which is much better. Okay, so this was our old app. It was developed by some software developers in India, and um, we actually got to Elance. Who's, who's procured developed to Elance? <laughs> okay, yeah, keen to hear your experiences. Okay, so it was a native iOS app. It looked quite nice, but it was pretty buggy. We we saw behaviors that we just couldn't understand. And the other problem was that we didn't know what was going on. It was all a black box to us. So when we requested something, it would take three, four weeks for them to solve it. And in between, we had to you know, deliver and we had clients and stuff like that. Okay, so we started to look around. Last year, this time, I saw a presentation about Toby Kurian, for the love of Android. Did anyone see that presentation? No, I mean, it really opened my mind about some options out there. And I started the process of investigating what we should do next. So right at that time, there was a big debate that was happening when we had to make our decision at the end of last year. So Mark Zuckerberg famously said HTML5 is not ready um, for, for mobile. And, and there's uh, several reasons why that happened, which I'll get into just now. And then a company called Censure came back and they, they took real offense to this comment. So they built a, a, a Facebook clone, or Fastbook, and they made it purely in HTML5 and JavaScript and performed wonderfully. They kind of struck back with their own, you know, with their own blow to this whole debate. And in the middle of this, I was trying to make a decision: should we, should we stick with with uh, with uh, with our iOS app and maybe do an Android app, or should we go cross-platform? Okay, does anyone know what the problem is with HTML5 JavaScript? The JavaScript part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so JavaScript is actually um, for a mobile environment. It's, it's not a good idea. Um, so mobile devices, depending on what you've got, could be between five and ten times slower. You've obviously got far less memory than you do on a desktop, um, and that's because you've got a really small battery that this whole thing needs to run off of. So it has to be a really energy efficient processor. So, um, so apparently, I read this big um, research paper on the issue, and apparently, the problem is that JavaScript and Ruby and dynamic li languages like that are, are garbage collected, and that means you have to have a you, you need to have memory headroom and also some processing headroom to work with, otherwise it's going to slow down dramatically. Does anyone know anything else about that? I mean, it's going to be five times. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, so, garbage click things. yeah, so you need a lot of memory headroom, which you don't have in a mobile device. So that was one of the problems. Okay. So, you know, but for me, the nice thing about going with JavaScript is that I've got some existing prior knowledge, and there's just such great options to work with. Sensor Touch, wonderful tool, jQuery Mobile, which we ended up using in the end, um, PhoneGap, Backbone, Angular, Ember, you could use all those things, and I just, I love JavaScript. As a language, it's just, it's a little bit ex eccentric, but I really like it. So, yeah, so that's the main thing. And on the HTML5 um, side, you've actually got great storage options. Um, I know WebSQL has been deprecated, but PhoneGap has actually implemented a, a layer, an API layer, which pushes down to the device SQLite. And, and this is all really, really fast. 
Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some of the lessons that we had in developing our app. So in the end, we decided to go with HTML5 JavaScript, and uh, I started coding, like, before this, I had written maybe 40 lines of JavaScript in a Rails app, and yeah, I proceeded to write 3,000 or something lines of JavaScript. And um, yeah, the, the, one of the things, and I think this is a really important thing, depending on whether, you, whether you're aiming at business clients or at, at consumer market, is that your app will full feel a little bit like a, you know, like a, a mobile website. A really fast one, but it will have some interaction feel of a mobile website. And this might be adequate for you, or it might not. For us, it wasn't a problem. We, we just liked it the way it was, and, and we were okay that the screen loads and things like that felt a little bit like a mobile, uh, mobile website. Okay, so one of the things that Facebook did wrong is that they, um, they sent and received HTML and CSS and all kinds of things. The only thing you want to send and receive with your app is JSON, nothing else. It's pure data. You send and receive data. All the HTML templates, all the CSS, everything must be baked into the app, and the only thing you, sh you should be exchanging with the server is it's just data. Okay, next lesson that we got is um, you see CSS for, for GPO involvement. So if you use this, so on, on um, jQuery mobile, you've got this, you usually have div containers for your individual pages, and you just add a, 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 a kind of WebKit transform um, piece of CSS there, and what it then does is it forces um, 3D hardware acceleration here in your CSS, which is extremely useful and makes your app a lot faster. And all these things, all these little things made a huge difference for us in terms of speed and performance. And this was the first thing that really made a huge impact. The second thing um, is that you cannot have any kind of handling of your link events in HTML. So your href um, attribute must always be a hash and then you, sh you must uh, basically handle your your um, events all in JavaScript. So anyone else got a uh, the similar experience in terms of performance? Okay, well, there's some nods here. So, rule number two, basically just handle all your events in JavaScript. Okay, the other thing is that, um, and uh, yeah, it's, I'm sure a lot of people have comments about this, but I didn't know this, but uh, when I started developing the app, somebody explained to me that um, when you have a click event, with jQuery, that actually bubbles up all the way to the highest level elements, your body elements, and maybe even higher, I'm not sure. And what you should do is, to avoid all this processing and, and tracking going on, you should disable that, and you should um, not have the event bubbling going on all the way to the top, to the, to the, to the uh, body container, or as far as it goes. Um, does anybody use this on a regular basis? Okay, so yeah. So, I mean, all the things that I talk about are well-known, well-researched. You just need to go and, and read up on them. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty standard stuff. Okay, so what did not work in our app? So, um, funny enough, we, we have to have a signature pad. And my first iteration was to implement it in JavaScript using a jQuery signature um, kind of piece of code that somebody wrote. Has anybody seen jQuery signature? Okay, jQuery signature or something. So we did that and what I found was that the performance was actually quite quite bad. So as you're drawing your finger, what it actually does is generate a huge JSON data object with a series of coordinates. So the start coordinate for the first point, the end coordinate for that same for that same line, and then the start coordinate again, the end coordinate. And doing this all in real time was just too cumbersome for the JavaScript to do. So we actually had to implement the, the signature in, in local code. So uh, there's an there's a, a Objective-C implementation for our iOS version, and then there's an Android implementation for our Android version. So this really didn't actually work with, with HTML5 and JavaScript. Okay, so the other thing that didn't really work was um, jQuery Mobile's transitions. Um, so and also the canvas element. So anything in HTML5 that has to do with drawing or rendering, um, I definitely would recommend it for a cross for a cross platform app. But then again, most people's apps basically do what a website would normally do. And in that case, I think it's a perfect thing to use. And then, uh, to give an example, what, what jQuery have is these, these transition events to make it look like a, 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 you know, like a custom interface. My experience is that they don't work so well. They stutter, sometimes pages flow over each other, so we just disable transitions completely. And the user interface is actually a lot better because of it. Okay, so the result 
is this. Um, this is the new version, and it looks almost exactly the same um, between Android and iOS. And we felt the we found the performance to be extremely good. For example, when we um, when we save a huge uh, response instance, it, it saves all the stuff to to file system, passes the JSON, goes and retrieves stuff again, passes the JSON again, and shows it to you, and it all happens astonishingly quickly. And I think the reason for that is because in PhoneGap, um, PhoneGap actually pushes those events down into native very quickly. So the wrapper, the PhoneGap wrapper is just such an awesome way for you to implement really, really great functionality um, for your mobile app. Okay, I'm going to show you just a, a, a bit of... Okay, so yeah, thank you. Before I show a demo, um, I might not have time, but... Um, okay, so I've got five minutes. So the, the, um, the, the native the, uh, iOS emulator doesn't work so well in, on the screen, but basically when we load events, you can see, I mean, okay, it's desktop at the moment, which is a lot faster, but our, our loads events are extremely fast. I mean, it might be 30 or, or 50, second, 50 milliseconds uh, slower than they are here, but it's still, you know, to go from screen to screen is, is still quite fast. And we don't have the native transitions, but we feel that's not such a big deal for us. Okay. Any questions? Anyone? Um. <laughs> yeah, I think I think with the signature pack we got close to those memory limits because there was a noticeable um, decrease in performance. And the other thing that we noticed that really pushed the memory is if we if we push buttons, start push buttons really fast after each other. Like if you go like this, then there seems to be a lag in the, you know, in the processing, and, and they all get processed, all events get, get executed, but just there seems to be like a lag that builds up if you press buttons too quickly. And so you have, you've got to wait for screens to render before you do anything. Um, but other than that, we found the app to be, you know, quite fast. Does anyone else have different experiences, for, uh, you know, in their mobile development? Yeah, sure. Yes, the data is stored locally. So um, we we use local storage um, for, for certain variables. There's also a SQL database running on the app, uh, on, on the device, and we've got file storage. So all the responses. So when we generate a question, we get a question template, which is a which is a JSON, basically a JSON string written on a text document. And then when we when we create responses for that text, it just creates more text documents. So we will have a text document per um, you know per response. And then when we need to load up that response, we just go and take the JSON, pass it into the app and show it, and then when it's finished, we just save it back to the file. Which is actually the astonishing part. File operations are supposed to be some of the slowest, and they're really, really fast on this app, which is really, uh, uh, to me, was the biggest surprise of all. How would you not push the data to the Yes, we do. So, so when we when we get back to a Wi-Fi area or where we can upload the data again, we take all the responses and then we upload them in bulk. And that's, I mean, because we're sending we're sending JSON data essentially. Also, that's that's quite possible.